Sky, is everyone present? Everyone correct? Um, I've got quite a long premiere for you today, so hopefully you're going to enjoy that. I think the runtime of the calls alone is over an hour. However, I kind of enjoy watching the premieres with you, so the editing might not be that great. Um, there's a mostly SSA scams, uh, which seems to be the most rampant at the moment. Uh, so there's like uh, quite a lot of SSA scams, but at one point, one guy actually has the tenacity to uh, pretend he's from the DEA, DEA. I kind of tried to blag him that uh, I could track where he was. Of course, I like, don't really know anything about computers, but um, I was just trying to scare him. Uh, but when during that part of the call uh, where the guy from the DEA, DEA is talking to me, um, something happens, it's on his end, and the phone gets really echoey. So headphone users, um, beware. Also, do let as many people as you can know about this SSA scam. It just seems to be everywhere at the moment. Um, this is actually from a recent live stream uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, it's a couple of calls from a live stream. What I'm trying to do is have a bit of a tidy up of my channel so that like new subscribers and stuff, when they come to the channel, they don't see just sort of streams that are a bit of disarray. So what I'm going to do is now, after I stream, is start taking uh, the streams down, but then any good calls or fun calls, I'm going to just upload as separate videos or do premieres with them or yeah, things like that, hopefully, which will mean it will be a bit more organized and people can just see videos that have the fun parts without having to scroll through all the stream bits. Of course, I will still be streaming as normal Wednesdays and Fridays, normally 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. EST. Um, and so if you want to be involved with the streams in that way, of course, when they're actually happening, which is the best way, then just make sure you're there for that, that which means if you aren't subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't hit the notification bell, hit the notification bell. Um, so that said, Hopefully, I hope you're going to enjoy these calls. I think they're pretty fun. Um, as I, said, I haven't edited that much because some of it I don't remember that well, so I'll be watching along with you in the premiere. So, uh, yeah, enjoy everyone and remember stay safe, stay aware. Calling Social Security Administration. How can I help you? Um, yes, hi sir. I've received a message saying that uh, there's some kind of problem with my social security number. All right, what's your social number, sir? Uh, it's it's 417. Mm -hmm. 19. Mm -hmm. 7-6-1-7. Your birth date? Sorry? Your birth date? Oh, my date of birth. Uh, yes, it's the, uh, the 14th of October, 1973. Please repeat your social. 417-19-7617. All right, sir. I got it. I did not got your date of birth. Uh, for 14th of October, 1973. 14th of October, 1973. That's okay. correct. Yeah. And how long ago you received the phone call from this number? Uh, I was at work. It was sometime this morning. Okay. Okay. So just hold on for a moment and please help me with your first name and your last name also. Uh, it's Jake, J-A-K-E. Your last name? Uh, Longrod, L-O-N-G-R-O-D. Longrod. Yes, sir. Just hold on for a moment. Um, pulling up your case file. After that, I will tell you each and everything, okay? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. Sir, by chance, if you are talking to me on a speakerphone, put me off to the speaker, step aside and then talk to me. Because these are confidential information should not be discussed with anyone at any circumstances. Oh, no, it's not. It's not the speakerphone. Uh, my phone is just a bit antiquated. Um, there's no one around me, so don't worry about that. All right. So I'm going to read your case file. Please listen to me very carefully. And okay. once I finish, you can ask your question regarding this case, okay? Is that okay to you? Yes, absolutely. 
Sir, your social has been found suspicious in criminal activities in the state of Texas. Right now, we are taking this issue to the FBI headquarters because we have all those strong evidences which are enough to prove you guilty inside the courthouse. Texas Attorney General has filed two felony charges against your name, money laundering and drug trafficking under Section 349, Column 21. Mm. Actually, what happened, sir? We found an abandoned car on the south border of the Texas and that car was containing some blood and drugs inside it. Mm. And after the investigation completed, we found that the car was rented on your name using your personal social information. There was an address also which was raided by US Marshals, but unfortunately we did not get anybody inside that residence. At that time, my officials found some cooking and domestic documents like bank statements and checkbooks from different financial institutes like Bank of America, TD Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, entire paper box has your name on it. Thousands of dollars already transferred locally and internationally from those bank accounts. Let me remind you the case is for drug trafficking and money laundering. That is why, sir, the Texas Attorney General has issued a legal arrest warrant on your name to take you into custody. So if you know anything about this case, you can tell me right now over this federally recorded phone call. Otherwise, I have to start the legal proceeding against your name. But, uh, well, I don't, I didn't really, I, I don't really understand. So you're saying that I've been laundering money and, and drug trafficking? Yes. Well, and, and, and what evidence do you have for this? Sir, this happened yesterday in the state of Texas. But I, I don't live in Texas. I know that, sir. I can understand you. Yes, yeah, sir. If this happened yet, I mean, I live, I live for good. Sorry. 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 I, you know, it's about a ten-hour drive from Texas. So, I mean, I've, I've got witnesses. I, I can prove that I wasn't in Texas yesterday. Sir, it was your name, which was involved in these criminal activities. Because the car was rented on your name using your personal social information. It, and all the paperwork are against your name. That is why you have been contacted today. But but I haven't had... You said the, what, what type of car was it? Toyota Corolla. I haven't owned a Toyota, a Toyota Corolla since, since 94. All right. We found 16 bank accounts registered under your name. Wow. You are having 16 bank accounts? No, I, I've only got two bank accounts. I mean, the last time I drove a Toyota Corolla, I think it was it was 1994, and uh, in the rearview mirror I saw the, the law. And he said, pull over to the side of the road. And I said, why? Is it because I'm young and I'm white and my hat's real low? Are you disabled? Am I disabled? I'm asking you a question. Are you disabled? Uh, it depends if you count masturbation addiction as a disability. Okay. Sir, millions of dollars have been transferred locally to internationally from those 16 bank accounts. So, money laundering is the case filed against you. So, are you doing these type of criminal activities? No, like I said, I haven't been in trouble since 94. And even then, he said, well, I, can I look around the car a little bit? And I said, I know enough that you won't illegally search my shit. And he said, oh, are you some type of lawyer or something, someone important or something? I said, well, I haven't passed the bar, but I know enough, a little bit enough that you won't illegally search me. Okay. So what, what is the available money in your bank accounts and from where that money is coming? What do you do for your living? Um, just this. I, well, I'm a painter and decorator. And what is the money in your bank account? Uh, at the moment, it's about uh, two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, in your board bank accounts, you have only twenty five hundred dollars. Yes. Okay, so you don't know anything about the case? 
You're no, no, no. I mean, I, I've got 99 problems, but uh, a Toyota, Toyota Corolla isn't one. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Have you ever lost your wallet or your social security card before? Yeah, I lost my wallet in El Segundo, which is sort of near Texas. But that was a long time ago. Okay. Did you lost your social security card along with your wallet? Oh yeah, everything was in there. My driving license, my social security, all, all sorts. Did you report it at that time when you lost your social? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you ever share your personal details with anyone, like for any loan or online company something? Uh, I did, uh, not a company or anything online, but I did write, uh, I don't know why I did it, I'd, I'd had a few sherbets and I, I for some reason wrote my whole credit card number and CVV and social security number on a stripper's buttocks. That probably wasn't very clever. To whom you shared your personal details? A stripper. Why, sir? Well, I was I was in love, in love with the stripper. You were in love with a stripper? Yeah, well, you know how you get. You have a few sherbets, a few sniffs, and you uh, you do silly things, don't you? I mean, you've had a night out like that, haven't you? Okay, sir, I'm going to transfer your phone call to that DEA department. He will speak to you. He will tell you that what you need to do. Just stay on the line with me, okay? All right, thank you. Because, I, because I'm not the right person to take any decision over here. Right. Please uh, sign the authority of your case for me. And make sure do not disconnect this call. Until the time over this federally recorded phone call, disclose these higher confidential information. Okay. You don't know who the real is. Might be your friend, your family member. Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Type of criminal activities I to put you in a legal trouble. Yeah, no, no, I had enough of that. Answering. Yes, sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, I'm here, sir. Yes, sir, you stay with me. Okay. Just allow me a moment after your phone. Okay, thank you. It will take 20 seconds, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for staying on the line. Your call has been transferred to Chief Investigation Officer John Anderson from the Department of DEA, which is Drug Enforcement Administration. Right. If Mr. J comes speaking with. Yes, it is, sir. Yes. Well, Mr. the long rod. Okay, right. Yep, absolutely. So, Mr. Longrod, uh, I believe you have spoken to the social security officers and they must have told you about this case as well, what exactly happened. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit hey, concerned, of course, because I, I, I wasn't in Texas yesterday and that's what I was saying to your colleague and I, I was working, so I have witnesses that know that I wasn't in Texas yesterday. I understand that, but I, let me clear one thing with you, first of all. That the officer you were talking to, that's not my colleague, because previously you were speaking to the Social Security Administration Department. Now your call has been transferred to Drug Enforcement Administration Department. You are speaking to John Anderson. Right. And why it has been transferred to us? Because we can see there are two felony charges on your name, which is money laundering and drug trafficking. So, Mr. Congrot, I need to know from you, like, do you take any kind of drugs like cocaine, weed, and any other stuff like that? Well, I, 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 I have a little bit of, I smoke weed, but that's legal here. Yeah, just get it from the dispensary. But no, I haven't done cocaine since, uh, since about 94. Okay, so you take prescribed drugs. Sorry? You take the prescribed drugs. I'm saying you take the prescribed drugs. Right? Well, I'm not prescribed weed. It's just you're allowed to buy it now. Well, it helps with my anxiety. So, yeah, I suppose, yes, you could call it a prescription drug. Okay. Okay, understand. And Mr. Longrod, I need to know, like, have you ever been arrested for money laundering and drug trafficking before? No, I, as I was explaining to your colleague, there was an incident back in, in, um, in 94. Um, 
when I looked in my rear view mirror and there was the law. Uh, now I wasn't see, trying to see any highway chase with Jay, so uh, so I pulled up to the side of the road. Uh, the cop said, son, do you know what I'm stopping you for? And I just said, uh, is it because I'm young and I'm white and my hat's real low? Or should I guess some more? A anyway, no, yeah, so no, that was the only incident, but yeah, uh, nothing else happened. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Longer, uh, one more thing I need to know from you as well, that uh, you have never been arrested for money laundering and drug trafficking before. And like, do you have any doubt on anyone who can use their information for doing this crime? Uh, well, there was a, uh, a stripper that I had a fling with back in 2003, but, um, you know, I, I don't think she would have kept my details for, for this long and then used it. It's a bit strange, uh, but that's the only person I've ever shared my personal details with. Okay, all right. So, okay, uh, Mr. Longer, uh, as for your statement, you are saying that you are not involved in this case directly or indirectly. Somebody else is using your information for doing this crime. This is your statement here. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Longro, you can prove yourself innocent as well, that you were not been to Texas recently as well? No, I haven't been, I haven't been to Texas in a long time. I mean, I, yeah. I left my heart in San Francisco, but yeah, not, not Texas. Okay, I understand. And uh, Mr. Longer, uh, one more thing I want to inform you that as for your statement, if we believe you that yes, you are innocent, you have not done any crime, but the thing is that your information has been used for the, doing this crime. So definitely you are the one who would be responsible, who would be contacted and might be possible you would be accused as well because Texas Attorney General is clearly saying that they have a strong evidence which are enough to prove you guilty inside the courthouse. That is the reason they have issued an arrest warrant as well on your name with the help of courthouse. Why, what we are doing, going to do here, first of all, as you told us on the federally recorded line that you are innocent, you have no idea about it, you're not involved in this case directly or indirectly. Your information has been compromised and somebody else is using your information. So on a first note, we are going to suspend your social security number with the help of social security office. Mm. So that because we don't know where else in the USA it's being misused. So a new social security number will be given to you within 24 hours time. So like tomorrow around 9 to 12 in the morning, you will get a call from the local social security office. The officer will be booking an appointment with you so that they will be coming down at your residence. So they will be having the seal pack envelope, which will be containing the NOC, which is no objection certificate. And I'm so security number. You need to put uh, sorry, so they'll be coming down at my re residence? Yeah. First of all, they will contact you, they will book That's an appointment nice with you, and then they will be coming. Because they will be investigating as well, okay? Uh, well, they'll be coming everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can. Oh gosh, I, uh, I hope they have enough protein. Uh, see, uh, see, but it will not be done because first of all we need to proceed from our side and then we will be notified each and every field, and then only it will be done. So what is going to be happen? First of all, Mr. Longer, as I told you, there is an arrest warrant which has been issued on your name. So we don't know at any point of the time the cops will be there and they can take you into custody as well. And the custody will be minimum of six months. So that is the reason what we have to do. On the first note, we need to cancel the arrest warrant which are under your name. But Canceling the arrest warrant is not an easy task, okay? What we have to do, we have to submit as asset verification form to Texas Attorney General in order to cancel the arrest warrant and drop the case which is filed against you. And now this is a case for identity theft as well because your identity has been compromised as well. So on this federally recorded line, Mr. Longroad, I want you to be honest with me because each and everything is getting recorded and this recording is going to be shared with FBI headquarters and U.S. Marshals. So this recording could be in your favor and might be against you. It's totally dependent on your statement. Mr. Longrod, on this federally recorded line, first of all, you let us know that how many properties do you have? Uh, well, I don't own any properties. I just, I just rent. Hello? Hello? 
I'm sorry. I didn't hear from you. Sorry, uh, I okay. don't own any properties. I, I just rent. I rent a property. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, you live in a rental property. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. And how many cars do you have? Uh, just the one. Okay. You have one car. Have you ever lost your car? Uh, well, I mean, for a few hours, yeah. I had one night, like, with my friend Ashton. And, um... Okay. Like, we got pretty messed up, and the next day it was all like, dude, where's my car? But we found it eventually. Okay, so, like, was that a prank? Your friends played with you? Was that a prank that you just lost it for a few hours? No, no, we were together. We just, we just, we went to a bar and then, like, we went, uh, we had a bit of a smoke and then the next day we were like, we couldn't find it. We couldn't remember where we parked it. So it was like, dude, where's my car? Okay. Okay, I understand that. Right. Okay, and apart from that, I want to inform you, Mr. Longroad, that what we can see, we can see there are 16 bank accounts which are running on your name right now, and thousands of dollars is being transferred locally and internationally. So we cannot differentiate between the genuine bank account and the bogus bank account. That is the reason you're having money laundering charge on you as well. So we want you to help us out here so that we can differentiate between what exactly belongs to you and which are fake. This is called as asset verification. So, Mr. Longro, you let us know how many bank accounts do you have? Just two. Okay, and which, are, which is the bank you're banking with? Uh, I One with uh, Chase Bank and uh, one with Citibank. It's TD Bank or Citibank? Sorry? Uh, sir, it's Citibank you're banking with or TD Bank? Oh, uh, Citibank. I've not heard of Citibank. Okay. All right. Uh, in Chase Bank, which kind of account do you have? Is it a check-in or saving? Uh, savings. You got saving in Chase Bank, and you do not have any check-in in that. Uh, no, just savings with Chase. That's just where I put, I transfer, I get paid into my um, Citibank account and then I put a little bit aside every month, uh, which goes into my Chase account. You're banking with, yes, and you're banking with Citibank as well. So in this bank, which type of account do you have? Is it checking or saving or both or only saving? Uh, both, both. But I don't use the savings account with the Citibank. I just use the uh, che checking account to get okay, paid into. Okay, apart from that, do you have any credit card from these financial institutes, these banks? Uh, yes, I've got a, uh, a MasterCard from uh, Citibank. You got a credit card? You got Master Credit card from Citibank? Uh, oh, it might be a debit card, actually, sorry. Uh, and then uh, I think I, uh, I've got a Visa credit card. Gold, gold card. Okay. You, okay, and w which is the financial institute of your credit card? Which bank is that? Uh, they're both with uh, t Citibank. Uh, Citibank. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Longroad, just stay on the line. Let me check your details that we can get to know between the genuine and the bogus accounts. Okay. Yeah, that would yeah. Uh, that would be great. Thanks. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Mr. Longer, I have checked your information here. I was just verifying your information with our system, and I found here that in your Citibank account, there are three check-in and three savings, which are running currently. And in Chase Bank, there is one check-in account and three savings account, which are running on your name, okay? okay? So we cannot differentiate like what belongs to you, but we can surely say that in Chase, as you told us, according to you, you do not have any check-in. So definitely that check-in does not belong to you. But we can see there are three savings as well. So I'm sorry we cannot differentiate between your savings and the other bogus saving accounts. Right. So as, if you can help us out with the exact figures which you have in your account, so that that will be really great so that we can differentiate it. Okay. In so each it, saving it, account, it, you remember how what is the available fund which you have? have yeah, it's two thousand five hundred in my uh, checking account with uh, Citibank, and then in my savings account, I think there's about six thousand. 
Okay, about 6,000. But I'm sorry to inform you, I, I was not talking about the Citibank here. I was simply talking to you about the Chase Bank saving account. Yeah, so that's around 6,000. I think, uh, let me just check it. I think it's 6,240. You can check with the Chase Bank savings as well and Citibank checking and saving. Give me the exact figure, that will be really right. great for that. In the Chase Bank, I've got 6,240 and I only have a savings account there. 6,240 and 38 cents. Mm -hmm. And in your check-in? Uh, $2,561.72. Okay, and in the saving one with Citibank? 6000 and I need to check it on my phone again. Mm -hmm. 6000 You can take your time. Yeah, and 38 cents. Okay. All right, no issues. Just turn the line, okay? We can just differentiate here. Okay, we got your information here, okay? And Mr. Longrod, what we are going to do, we are going to simply submitting your asset verification form to Texas Attorney General in order to cancel the arrest warrant and drop the case which is filed against you. Even we will update them that it's not you who has done this crime, it's your information which has been used by someone else. That is the reason you're facing this problem, okay? Even you want the actual culprit to be caught as soon as possible. All right? Right. Okay. Uh, but before that, I want to inform Mr. Longrod that if your asset verification form got declined, I mean to say that if Texas Attorney General refused to believe your details, then even we can't do anything in that case. You will be get arrested. You need to hire a criminal lawyer to prove yourself innocent, and you need to visit Texas as well. But just allow me a moment so that I can submit your form and I can speak to them about it and I will get back to you. So make sure this line should not be disconnected under any circumstances because we need to submit this recording to FBI headquarters and US Marshal. So it could be in your favor or might be against you, okay? Yeah, no, I'd appreciate that. I don't want them coming all over the place. Enough of a mess as it is. Stay with us. I'm just, uh, yes, stay on the line. Uh, let me submit it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Longer, are, are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, are you talking to me on speaker? No, sir. I, I explained to uh, the SSA guy, uh, my phone is it's a bit old, so it sounds like it's on speaker, but it's, it's not. Okay, no issue. So, Mr. Longrood, I have submitted your form to Texas Attorney General, and they have not cancelled your arrest warrant yet. They have just put your arrest warrant on hold only. And meantime, they told us what they are going to do. They are going to notify all the banks. Like I have told you, there are 16 bank accounts. They are going to seize all the bank accounts, which they can see. I mean to say, each and every bank account, any credit card, any investment funds, any kind of loan as well, each and everything will be seized up and will be frozen up from the U.S. Treasury Department. So I mean to say that you will not be having any access to your bank account, to your credit card, if you're having any investment funds or any kind of loan as well. You will not be having any access to that once your case will be resolved. Each and everything will be taken care of by U.S. Treasury Department, okay? This is what they have told us they are going to do now. So I talked with them as well, Mr. Longroad. I told them that we believe that you are a genuine person. You have not done any crime as well. So it will be really hard to survive as well if you will not be having any access to your money. Is it correct or not? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I need access to my money. Yes, absolutely. That is what I, I was talking to them, that it will be really hard to survive as well because this is the money which you got it like for working, for doing a lot of hard work. So I was talking to them about it. So what they have told us, they said that if you want to save your money, so they can give you a 24 hours time only because once you will get your new social security number, you can take care of it, about it as well. But right. you cannot do anything like that. For that, if you wish to save your money, you need to speak to the U.S. Treasury Department about it because those are the authorized officers who need to take care about it. Well, I'm just, well, just cancelling my cards online now anyway, so that, that's okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get you. I'm just cancelling my cards so that no one can use them or anything because obviously I'm a bit concerned that someone's imitating me. Yes, absolutely. There's no problem, as I told you. But the thing is that if you wish to save your money, then only you can speak to the U.S. Treasury Department. I can connect your call to them. 
you can talk to them so that they can help you something so that you can safeguard your money at least otherwise you will not be having any access to your money for minimum of six months because six. once this will be resolved then you will be having the access to your money again okay well, I'm, in, I'm in the online chat with with my bank at the moment and they've said it's fine they, they, they cancel it and they'll just send me out a new card so it's not it's not going to be six months it's going to be like two days mm -hmm. the, who's saying that my my bank the cheese bank and the titty bank okay cheese bank is saying yeah okay they are saying sir they said, they said two days. They said they'll cancel it and they'll send me a new card so I don't need to worry about any fraudulent activity. Yeah, absolutely. They told you that you will cancel the card and you will get the card, okay? Yeah. But I think that the account will be freezed, right? Because will be freezed. It's going to order the bank so that all the accounts which you have, that will be frozen up. I mean to say that your card will not be working at that time. If you get a new card as well, nothing. There's no way that you can get your money back because it will be seized it will be frozen up from the u.s treasury department your bank has not been notified about it yet that is the reason they are telling you about it yes they can deliver you the card within two days but you cannot use those card anymore because on your account there will be a seize okay do you understand that yeah yeah yeah, I do, yeah. okay so you need to let us know if you wish to save your money so we can transfer your call. Otherwise, no issues. We are simply going well, to... D don't transfer me just, just yet. Um, I just, just got a question. A oh. couple of questions for you, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. No issues. You can ask me any question. Uh, well, the first question would be, how stupid are you? Uh, who? You. No, I'm not. Uh, well, you are because you know, do you know why? Because you're using a very cheap VOIP. You're, you need. Allow me to finish. I've sat and listened to your drivel for the last okay. forty minutes. Allow me to finish. Okay. You're using a very cheap VOIP. It's very easy to bypass it and see exactly where you are located within India. It's also a very silly thing when you're being recorded and watched by 150 people to claim that you're an agent of the Drug Enforcement... What did you call it? The, the, the Drug Enforcement Administration? Because uh, you are identifying yourself as an officer of the DEA, which is the most fraudulent thing you can do. So for all the crap that you're lying to me about that I've been involved with, you are the biggest criminal and... Uh, Good luck, mate, because uh, because your VOIP is a two rupee VOIP, about the same as it costs for a go on your mum and sister down the GB road. Um, and it's very easy to bypass that and see exactly where you're located. And so once this call and recording is forwarded to the actual investigation authorities, it will be you that will be going to jail. And when you're getting bummed in the shower by Big Bubba, I'm going to be sitting here laughing and thinking about your tiny Indian ass getting destroyed, basically, getting stretched out. I mean, disgusting, but that's what's going to happen. Okay, okay understand. So uh, I will be really great if you can help me with the address where I'm located right now. The the address? Uh, yes. Noida? You have just passed the things and you got to know where we are located right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Sector 4B, Noida? First of all, I want to inform you that we are not in India. Where are you then? And I'm not going to tell you where, okay? You're not, well, of course you're not, because you're a criminal. Uh, you, you, you're, in you're imitating a DEA officer. It's, it's incredibly criminal, and you've done it on a live stream to 160 people. I just pray to God there's at least a couple of real um, enforcement agents watching this and going, we are going to find this guy and destroy him, because you, sir, are a massive felon. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. First of all, you cannot find me because, see, you were highly mistaken. First of all, you were saying that we are located in India, where we are not. Right. Where, just, where are you then if you're not in India? Because because my sources tell me you're definitely in India. I'm not going to tell you which country we are located. Well, no, that's because you're, you're okay. panicking because you, I know you're in India. I know you're in India. So don't lie to me, boy. Don't lie to no, me, little boy. Not at all, actually. Yes, certainly I can say that you cannot trace at all. Yeah, just it's not very hard to bypass a VOIP, especially when you buy one as shitty as yours. Happy, mm -hmm. ho happy Holly, by the way. 
You're going to find us. Happy Holly, all. are you going to be out in the streets painting yourself later? <laughs> Social Security Administration, how may I help you? I have uh, received a, a message saying that uh, my uh, my Social Security number is going to be suspended. Well, sir, when did you receive that message? I would say, I'd say about uh, between 10 and, and 12 this morning. Okay, sir, can you please help me out with your name so uh, I'll be able to grab your file? Yes, it's Jock McTavish. Can you please spell that out for me? I, my first name is J-O-C-K. And what's your last name? It's McTavish, that's uh, capital M, C, capital T, A-V-I-S-H. Okay, Mr. Zuck, I got your file. Now, for verification and further investigation, can you please confirm the last four of your socials? Ah, uh, it's 7612. 7612, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, here. The reason you received a call from our department is because we have received order and notices from law enforcement agencies to suspend your social security number on an immediate basis. Hayes, we have received suspicious trails of information under your name. So are you aware about this? No, no, I, I've, not, I've not heard nothing. So before we move ahead, I would update you that these lines on which we are talking at this moment of time are being federally recorded and monitored by the three major government affiliations, Federal Trade Commission, Better Business Bureau, Financial Crime Enforcement Network. So please don't interrupt me in between and listen to me carefully. I, I promise. Wouldn't I, I wouldn't interrupt you, darling. Okay, here, the investigation started under your name and your socials. When we recovered an abandoned car in the south border of Texas, make and model of this car was Toyota Corolla, vehicle number TX1440. This car was idle on the streets and the locals reported about this car to be suspicious after which local sheriff investigated on the car. They found some drugs and blood residue inside the car, which kept them completely enthralling. Further, during investigation, they found this car was rented under your name and your socials. And the address linked to the title of the vehicle is 7609 Crescent Avenue, El Paso, Texas. Are you affiliated to this address? No, I, I've never been to Texas. Okay, this address is El Paso, Texas. That I'm talking about is already suspicious address, which was rated by why, the... Why, why is it suspicious? It What's been happening? Yeah, sir, please go on. I, what, what kind of suspicious activities have we heard there? Sorry? What kind of suspicious activities going on at that address? Sir, we found a vehicle, Toyota Corolla, okay? Aye. We found drugs and blood inside that vehicle. Inside what what that about semen? That car, sorry? Uh, was there any semen? I didn't got that, sir. I ah, you found drug, drug and blood money. Is that right? We found a drug and blood inside that car. Right. And that was rented under your name. 
There, wasn't it? Sorry? It wasn't it? It was in El Paso, Texas. Aye, I heard that, you know, Fanny, but there was no car entered in my name. Yeah, I haven't blamed you for anything, okay? I haven't told you that you were that person. I am just giving you the information regarding this case, okay? All right, it's just sometimes it feels because I'm Scottish that, uh, that I'm being oppressed by the American government. Yeah, you will be if we found you guilty. What, you're you, saying you're going to oppress me? I, American government. Sorry? You're saying you're going to oppress me? They're going to arrest you, yep. If Aye, but I'm from a proud people, the land of Bravehearts and Rob Roy. Robbie Burns. Sorry? Sorry? Uh, do you not think my people have suffered enough? So it's very difficult to understand you. Can you please speak For a little? For years and years we were fighting with the English, the English scum. And now you're telling me that I've come to America to, to live out the American dream. And now you're telling me you found a car in the name of Jock McTavish and it's covered in blood and drugs and semen. Yep. Well, I, I, this is some kind of conspiracy. Sir, this is an investigation to have a verification whether you are involved in these activities or not. Okay? All right. Well, you go along there. Go on now. Tell me what else you got to say to me, Sugar Tits. Sir, okay. This address is El Paso, Texas. That I'm talking about is already a suspicious address, which was rated by the State Rangers Division and the U.S. Marshals. Aye, but why was it suspicious? What's suspicious? What was happening in the address? Was it a wee brothel? A drug den? Sir, I, I'm just telling you that we found that vehicle, okay, and the vehicle was rented under your name, okay, and we found that drugs and blood inside that vehicle, and... And semen? This address was El Paso, Texas, that I'm talking about is already suspicious address, which was raided by the State Rangers Division and the U.S. Marshals. Unfortunately, there was no one at this residence, and we have recovered 25 pounds of cocaine, which is an abusive drug, and it is categorized in the synthetic drug section. It is and this needs a recreational drug. Sorry? It's recreational, it's not abusive. It's only if you do too much. Sorry, sir, it's very, very, very hard to understand you, sir. I, I, because I'm Scottish. I'm not getting whatever you are saying. I'm saying it's hard for you to understand me because I'm Scottish. You are Scottish? Aye, I fail for I fail to Scotland. You are from Scotland? Aye, but now I live in America. I come to live the American dream. Sir, you come to live American dream. Yeah, that's Aye. what... But what? look, and now I've come here and I've got you, your, your fanny's phoning me up and, and telling me that you found my car and it's full of blood and drugs and semen. And you know what? Like, you can take my lives, but you'll never take my freedom. No, sir. I won't be taking your life. I won't be taking your freedom, okay? Please cooperate. No, you'll never take me freedom. All right? All right, all right. You, you carry on. Do you understand English? Do you understand English properly? I'm speaking English with you. Would you not be so rude to me? I'm so sorry. I'm not being rude, sir. I'm so sorry. No. I'm not. I'm just doing my duty, all right? All right. Just, oh, I'm so sorry for that. Now, sir, here. We found a vehicle, all right? And we found drugs and blood inside that vehicle, okay? 
and further during investigation, we found 25 pounds of cocaine. Okay? Oh, okay. Sounds like a good night to me. Yeah, it is very bad to you. Okay? Uh, Here. And, uh, yes, sir. This is an abusive drug, and it is categorized in the synthetic drug section. And some paperwork and documentations with some banking institutions like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and TD Bank. And all these four accounts, they were all under your name and your social. Here, the question arise when we were investigating on these banking statements. With the respected financial institutes, we found more than $240,000 of money have been wired from these accounts locally and internationally. Now, sir, have you got any bank account under these banks? I have got an account with TD Bank. You got bank account with TD Bank? Aye. So, do you got bank account in TD Bank? Yeah, I have got a bank account with TD Bank. Uh, what's the full form of TD Bank? I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. Uh, sir, you told me that uh, TD Bank. Can you please help me out with the spelling? I C R T Y. Okay. Do you hold savings or checkings in this bank account? I've got, uh, got both. Sorry? I've got one savings and one checkings account. Approximately, what is the total liability you have in this bank account at this point of time? Uh, it's around uh, $30,000. How much on checkings and how much on savings? I think there's about five thousand in my uh, in my uh, checkings and the other twenty five in the in the savings account. Okay, sir. Now, the state court of Texas has decided to get your existing social security number suspended on an immediate basis. Eight, we are facing three serious allegations charged against this culprit for the felony, which is money laundering, drug trafficking, and theft of identification. Right now, our main concern is to find down the culprit who is performing all these fraudulent and illegal activities and get to the bottom of this case so we can have a verification whether it's you or someone else. As the case has already been registered under your name and the arrest warrant has been issued under your name. Here, I need to make sure whether the information you have given is true or fake. So for that, can you please confirm your socials in a loud and clear voice in this federally recorded line? Which is going to help us out to make sure that the information you have given is true. Aye, aye. Sorry? Aye. Aye, it's Can true. Can you confirm your socials? My heart is free and I have the courage to follow it. Sorry, sir, I didn't get that. Aye, it means yes in Scottish. Okay, yes, okay. You never so, met a Scotsman before? Sorry? You never met a Scotsman before? Yeah, no, sir, I haven't met the Scottish before. Aye, well, you've lived a sheltered life. We're a proud nation. Sorry? We are a proud nation. Yeah, you need to be. I know that you are a proud citizen of Scottish. You need to be proud about that, okay? I now, am proud. 
Anlamıyoruz o sal. Leo. I what you saying? Can you please confirm your social security number? Yeah, I. It's four one seven one nine seven six one two. Okay, here. Now, sir, are you getting me, sir? Are you getting the information that I am giving to you? Are you getting each and every information? I, I, I understand everything you're saying to me. Okay, now, here. The Social Security Administration is now got the orders by the State Court House of Texas to get your existing Social Security number suspended on immediate basis. And now, what does that mean to you? That means whatever information is linked to your social security number across the whole of the United States will be seized and freezed by the law enforcement. And at this point of time, we only have some information in our custody. The reason why the information is getting freezed is because we have no idea, apart from Texas, which other areas your information is still getting misused? I, I, receiving any kind, yeah? I just find it uh, a wee bit upsetting. I mean, that my name is being used in this criminal activity. Honor is what no man can yeah, give you and none can take away. Honor is a man's gift to himself. Hello? Yes, hello? Yeah, sir, your identification have been taped by someone else and they are using your identification for all this fraudulent and illegal activity, okay? Ah, uh, if I find that dafty bomb, he'll be eating tough. <laughs> sir, now, have you been receiving any kind of phone calls from IRS and loan companies trying to offer you credit cards or loans? Ah, uh, on the daily? On the rake. Oh, do you recall someone trying to seek revenge from you and trying to use your name? Yeah, there's always these little uh, bastards. Uh, excuse my language, but these wee bastards always phoning up my, my, my phone and saying, oh, can I get you information? Oh. Okay, now. At this very point of time, the situation you are in at this moment, the Court of Conduct clearly states that any person who does not own a valid SSN social security number is no longer a valid citizen of the United States. I in this worked my bloody ass off to be a citizen of the United States. I swam here from Scotland. Yeah, sir. And sir, please uh, listen to me first, okay? As I have told you that a person without social security number is no longer a valid citizen of United States. In this situation, once your social security number is compromised, you need to first go and verify that I am speaking to the victim and the owner of this entity. Once we go ahead and verify the same, you will be assigned your new social security number, which will take approximately 24 hours from now. So, most probably, tomorrow we'll be having two government officials paying a visit to you at your residence. They will explain you how this case happened. So, only criteria to dissolve your old socials and issuing new social security number will be sorted. Are we clear to this? Hi. Now, sir, I have just received some information from the Social Security Administration. And according to them, your Social Security number was issued in Alabama. Is that correct? Aye, that's right. Well, sir, now I have received some more information. And according to the information, $240,000 of amount transaction have been done through four bank accounts 
and there are more for bank accounts with amount $137,000 and all of those accounts are registered under your name and we are going to seize all of those bank accounts by safeguarding your hard on money under the supervision of your local and there are also different address linked to your name, okay? Aye, Did you got what's my hard on money? Uh, the money that you have on your bank account. I uh, uh, under the supervision of your local police I, station. Uh, I mean, I pull a wee bit away each month for, you know, scrapers and prizes and that. I thought that was my hard on money. Now, sir, because there are lots of amounts like $240,000 under the bank accounts which are registered under your name and all of those accounts are illegal. All of those, all of those amounts are illegal which is being used by someone else by using your social security number and your name, okay? Now, sir, we have to transfer all of the detail of your old socials to the new one by verifying the correct information which is linked with you, okay? All right. Now, you need to keep that in mind. At this point of time, we first need to go and look what information is true and what information is fake. Here, we have few questions and I need an honest answer so we can help you in a better way, okay? Aye. Sir, how many addresses are listed under your name? Uh, just the one. Can you please help me out with the detail of your address? Aye, uh, it's uh, 420. Okay. Green Lane. It's what, Green Lane? Green. Green like the color. Or that. Uh, that's uh, Alabama. And what's the zip code? Uh, the zip code? Yep. Uh, hey, hold on, I haven't lived here long. Uh, I only walked here after I swam to the other coast. Uh, just one second, let me find a piece of mail with the zip on it. Uh, must have something. Bear with me a moment there, sir. Right, it's three five two one four. Three five two one four. Aye. Okay, now, sir, how many vehicle you on under your name? Uh, none. I have none. You don't have any vehicle? No. Okay, sir, how I many... A, I've, got, I've got a bicycle. Thinking with. Sorry? How many financial institutions are you banking with? Uh, just the one. Sir, can you please help me out with the name of the city? Alab uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, what's... Okay. Baltimore? Birmingham. Birmingham. Spell that out for me. B I R M I N G H A M. Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Now, you just have one uh, financial institution, you just uh, have Citibank. 
Ay. Yeah, sir, now. Ay. Do you have any credit cards under your name, under your position? Ay. Uh, can you please help me out with the name of the credit card? Ay, it's uh, uh, Visa. Visa? Hmm? Visa, yeah, in, you know Visa, right? Yeah, I got that, sir. Okay. And what is the amount do you have in Visa? Do you mean how how much money I've actually got in the Visa? Or do you mean the credit limit? Yeah, both of them, sir. Well, I, I think there's about uh, about uh, $30,000, but I've got a limit of up to 20000 Where's the limit? 20,000? Aye, 20,000. Sir, do you have any IRA or 401k? Uh, I, I don't know what that means. Okay. Do you have license under your name? Uh, what kind of license? What kind of license do you have? I have no. First license. I'm sorry. Driving license. No, Dri I, I'm not allowed to drive. I'm, I'm short-sighted, so I'm not allowed to drive. Driver. You don't have driver's license? No, I, I'll tell you for why. Because, because I, I, I got a problem with my cataracts. And I can't see properly. Is that, you don't have driver's license? No, because I can't see properly. I can only see partially, which means I'm not allowed to drive because I'd be a danger to people. I mean, it works out quite well for me because when I find a really, sometimes I can go to a bar and find a really ugly slag and it doesn't matter because to me she looks good through my messed up vision. Okay, sir. Now, uh, you will be getting a call from the police department, okay? Can you please help me out with the local police department number, which is linked near to you? I, I don't know the local police department number. You don't have a local police department number? No, I, I have no cause to phone the local police department. Why would I have the police department number? I mean, you, you can look it up, can you? You've got all that uh, fancy technology. That you can search it on Google, okay? Well, you can search it on Google, you lazy fucker. Yeah, sir, I'm gonna search it for you, alright? Alright, I appreciate that. Okay, sir, just be on a hold. I'm gonna uh, talk to my superiors for the local police department number, and we're gonna call them, okay? Just be on a hold. Alright. Hello, sir, are you there? I am here. Okay, sir. Now you will be getting a call from the police department, okay? Now you can note down that department number, all right? All right. Do you got pen and paper handy? Aye. Why, why is the police department? I don't, I, I don't want to speak to the police. Sir, they will resolve this case, okay? You don't need to worry about anything, okay? They will be calling you, they will be helping out to resolve this case. They're gonna safeguard your hard on money. They're gonna make you uh, feel they, better. They're gonna save my hard on money, are they? They're gonna safeguard your money, okay? It's not hard on them, that's fine. They're gonna safeguard your money, okay? Oh, they're gonna safeguard my money. So they're gonna send an officer here to look after me. Is it, am I going, I will I have to go into the witness protection program? Well, sir, just uh, note down the number. You will be getting a call from the police department and they're gonna 
help you out to resolve this case and then after we're gonna cancel your orange to orange too okay all right uh, what's the number you want i want you to know down the number or you want me to uh, if you got the police department number you can provide to me we just oh uh, should uh, i just uh, call the you, well i thought you were going to give me the number and i'll give the police department a call then no sir you will be getting a call from the police department. Well, if they're expecting me to call, I'll just call them now. Sir, they will be calling you, okay? But why can't I, why can't I, why can't I call them? They will be helping you out to resolve this case. Aye, so I'll give them a call. Now, you just tell me the, the way number and I'll call them. No, they will be calling you, sir. Aye, but why are you so adamant that I can't call them? So you can help me out with the number, okay? You can help me out I with the... I thought you were going to get the number, you lazy bastard. Yeah, I got that number, okay? Just note it down. All right. It's 205. 205. 328. 328. I, Nine one one. I I'm sorry. Could you repeat the last the last bit there? I got two o five three two eight. So I'm gonna repeat it from the start. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm two ready. Five. Right. Two o five. Wait. Three two eight. Three two eight. I. Nine three one one. Nine three one one. All right. So uh, you just wait there a wee moment. Well, I have to talk with the police department. Okay. Aye, I mean, yeah, aye, aye. That's uh, that's all. That's absolutely fine. What we're gonna, do, what we'll do, right? Because I've got, I've got my other uh, cell phone here. So. I'm just going to call the police while you're on the line. Is that all right? No, sir. No, sir. Please what? listen to me first, okay? Why not? I'm why, why, why can't, why, why can't I, I do have that? All this information to the police. I'm going to share all this information with you, okay? Yeah, I have no, to but it would be much okay? easier. I would feel much more comfortable to call them while you're there. So let's give the police department a wee call now, shall we? You will be. No, please listen. You will be a call from okay? No, no, don't, don't you worry. I'm calling them now. No, sir, they are calling you right now. They are calling you now, okay? They're gonna call you now. Well, I'm calling them now. Sir, please listen to me, okay? First, I have to share some more information regarding this case. Now, then you will be the one who will be going to the jail. Do you want to go to the jail? Why, why will I be going to the jail? I haven't done nothing. Uh, if you not cooperate with me, then I have to send all this information to the police department to get you arrested. Well, and what are you going to arrest me for? Because for all these activities. For what activities? All drugs, for all these drug trafficking and money laundry. Aye, but you'll never catch me. I've got a Toyota Corolla with 25 pounds of cocaine in it. You ain't going to find me, a schmuck. How are you going to find me? How are you going to find me from India? Hello? Fuck you. <laughs> That's why you don't want me to phone the police, because you're the criminal, and I'm going to find you. Oh, fuck you then, hang up. <laughs> Are you carrying a weapon on you? I know a lot of you are. I ain't stepping out of shit, I'm a pimp, it's legit.